Yeah, that's a big fish. <laughs> On the light tackle. Good morning, y'all. Captain Collier here. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Brandon. I fish here along the Alabama Gulf Coast for just about anything and everything from offshore to inshore. But today we are inshore. We've got some pretty conditions. I'm out here solo and we're going to be doing a little bit of flounder fishing. I do have some live bait and y'all know if you've been watching the channel, I love throwing this fish bites brawler right here. Just got that rigged up with a Texas Eye weedless jig head. That's a 3 16th ounce. And uh, I, I do use 20 pound fluorocarbon leader tied with an FG knot to 15 pound braid. And I'm throwing that on my Shimano Vanford. I think this is a 3000. Yeah, 3000 reel and uh, a medium light seven foot rod. So we're gonna get started here. See what all we can get into. If I start getting some bites on the artificial, I may throw some bigger baits just to see if we can up the quality. But let's get started here. We are on a high tide. We're at the peak of the high tide right now and it is just starting to fall. This is my favorite time to target flounder. And um, I have been doing that the last couple weeks and been having success on this same same tide cycle and we're going to be hitting a few different spots as you can see right now just hitting a flooded marsh bank and we'll probably be hitting some docks maybe some uh some kind of structure later on in the day that i normally can't get to on a lower tide cycle i am going to be focusing my cast real close to that bank not in the grass like that cast but as close as you can get it because i'm flounder love getting up inside that grass they can really blend in and pounce on any kind of finger mullet oh oh that's a bite oh my gosh that's a redfish i thought i'd seen something tailing i think it's a red just loosen that drag a little bit in case it's a big doormat oh okay i was just kidding it is a flounder but it ain't no monster there we go. Look at that. Easy release. Easy release. <sighs> calm down. Calm down. Well, there we go, y'all. What a gorgeous fish. Gorgeous flounder. I'm not going to be keeping any flounder today. Uh, some people are probably going to give me some hate, but I do like just searching some spots, seeing where they're at, and just throwing them back. You know, sometimes you just got to practice conservation, and I do preach that sometimes on this channel i understand not everybody gets to get out on the water as much as other people like myself and so some people need to eat but this flounder right here is going to get to go back very lucky all righty that's a good start good start two flounder maybe five or six casts Can't beat it. I do apologize if the sun is in y'all's eyes, but this is the best way that I could position the boat here. This is the very next cast. And as you'll see, I'm working this bait up and down, up and down, just kind of reeling in my slack. And the majority of the time, these fish are gonna hit it when I'm coming up. And that's when I feel the weight on this end of my rod tip. And uh, I'll usually give it a few seconds, anywhere between, you know, three to five or six seconds, just to make sure they, they get that bait all the way in their mouth, because a lot of times they'll just come up and grab it, but they won't have it all the way in their mouth. And I'm just working this bank, throwing about every three or four feet, trying to cover as much of this grass line as possible, as accurate as I can. All right, so I've pretty much covered this whole stretch of bank. We'll bring the power poles up, move us down 50 or so feet, and just start doing the same thing. I feel like you can only cast so many times in one spot, not get a bite, before you realize there's not any fish there or you've caught them all. Boom, there we go. Put the power poles down, boat will spin around. There he is. He is on. 
Give him a few seconds. Oh, I had to drag a little loose. Tighten it back up. There we go. Probably didn't get the greatest hook set on that one. Yep. Flounder number three. That would be another keeper right there. And he has destroyed my bait. All right, flounder number three right there. He's probably sitting at 15 or 16 inches. They only have to be 12 inches here in Alabama to be legal. He is absolutely 100% legal, but like I said, unless one of them swallows the hook and they're not gonna make it anyways, I will be releasing all these fish as much as I would like to take them home. My freezer is full. So I'm gonna get a good release on them. Oh yeah. Yep, yep. So if y'all are from this area, I don't know when I'll post this video, but here recently we've had a couple days of what we call a Jubilee. If you're not familiar with a Jubilee, basically it only happens in two places in the whole world, somewhere in Japan and here, right here in Mobile Bay. And what it is, is basically you got high water temperatures, low wind and low oxygen in the water and all these fish get lethargic like crabs, uh, flounder, catfish, croakers, most of the bottom fish species. They pretty much just get up on the bank. I don't know all the science behind it, but they're just real lethargic and it makes it real easy for people like giggers and stuff to go out there and just stab them in the face. That's all good and all, but basically what I'm trying to say is these flounder really just got hit hard. So just trying to be easy here and, and release as many as I can because I am going to be fishing a flounder tournament here the next month. And uh, one of the categories is to be able to catch as many as possible. And we give them to the CCA of Alabama and they're just going to tag all these fish, release them back in the water or the one is weighed in dead. They will be doing research on them. So can't wait for that. But that's enough talking. Let's get a mullet on and let's chunk a live bait out there and see if that makes a difference. Well, that's three flounder within 10 minutes, literally. So we're gonna try the Carolina rig. All this is is a little small bead, small, I think a quarter ounce egg weight and about 13 or 14 inches of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. And I do have some finger mullets in the live well here. Unfortunately, I do not have a net. So this, well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> These suckers are hard to catch, but we're just gonna rig this sucker up through both lips, just like so. And I really don't think he's gonna last very long. We'll chunk it out real close to that grass. And uh, a lot of people work live bait different when you're flounder fishing. I, I believe whatever works for you best, keep doing it. But I myself, I'll let the bait sit there for a few seconds, nothing thumps it. Obviously flounder or not, you know, search searching species they're not going to be just swimming around looking for baits most of the time they are just sitting there on the bottom waiting for a bait to come across them so i'll slowly reel it along the bottom a couple feet i'll stop it for a few seconds no bites i'll start reeling again but basically if that bait comes across their face they're not gonna not eat it i can guarantee you that Flounder are weird sometimes, y'all. I mean, I've, I've had days where you just wreck them on artificial and you just don't get as many bites on live bait for some reason. And the exact opposite goes for catching them on live bait and not so much on artificial. So if you have a couple anglers on the boat, it's also good to try different things, different methods. And I don't know if y'all can see it on the GoPro, but there's finger mullet just kind of riding up and down this bank. So of course, that's what they're gonna be feeding on because it's the most readily available bait. So if you can throw what's in the area as far as bait goes, generally that's what they're gonna be honed in on and that's what you'll have your best luck with. But of course, shrimp, pogies, croaker, smaller size, pinfish will work just as well. Oh, that was a bite. I felt that thump. He's on. Oh, as soon as it hit the water, I must have smacked it right on his face. What do we got? What do we got? It feels like a decent fish. Oh, yeah. Another flounder. Number four. 
trying to be easy with them since we are releasing them. I'm trying to be easy with the, release, the yeats. That's a good 16, 17 inch fish. Well, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is another good flounder. I love catching these fish. And as y'all can see, it doesn't really matter if it's artificial or live bait. That one was actually on a, a little small pogey. I got bit on the finger mullet. He took it from me, threw it right back out there, knocked it on his head, and uh, he ate it. So we're gonna let this fish go. You can actually, I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, but that's the bait right there in his belly. I can, I can feel it. So at least he got a meal out of it. already on I just hit the water oh feels like he's in something I got a fish but he's up in that tree or something oh okay okay we got him <laughs> knocked that fish in the head. <laughs> I got some grass along with them. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at all that grass. <laughs> Just dirtied the boat up, that's for sure. He was up in there. Man. Well, I think that's flounder number five and number six. Another one on the finger moulet. Probably right at legal size. This fish. <laughs> mm, right here at the boat. Boom. Right under the boat. Another one. <laughs> Definitely no shortage of flounder. Don't you bite my finger. Don't do it. Alrighty, buddy. Bye bye. Well, y'all, it's taking a break because it started raining on us. Decided to throw out another artificial lure, and we have our, I think, seventh flounder of the morning while it's pouring down raining. We're on a crazy, crazy good bite right now. I mean, that's another quality fish, too. That was on the Z Man paddle tail. I think that's the Croker color. But golly, what a good, good fish, good bite. I sure hope it stays like this. Man. Boom, there's another one. Second cast. <laughs> this is crazy. Mm. Golly, that's a big one. He feels like it. <laughs> nope. Small. When I set the hook, he felt huge. Yeah, he ain't even legal. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to move my my other rig back here behind the boat. He's about to pull the hook. There we go. Old Z-Man paddle tail putting in some work. I think we've caught about eight or nine, maybe 10 flounder here on artificial and some mullets. We're gonna go ahead and move spots since this storm has passed. I think we're gonna go try a dock. Should be high enough tide for us to get up in there. Hopefully there's some flounder there. All right, y'all, we just pulled up to this dock over here and I seen all this bait. Something's busting on them, but I couldn't get any bites on the popper. We're gonna go ahead and throw a cast net and load up real quick. Golly, there's so many. We're fixing to load up. Y'all watch this. <laughs> oh, that net's full. 
Golly. We're good on bait. <laughs> that is a one and done. That's some nice, nice little junior mullets too. That's flounder candy. Candy. Go ahead and stick them in this front live well here. That way I can grab them a little bit easier since I don't have a, a bait net. So we have moved locations again. We're now sitting under a bridge right now and there's a good drop off marking tons of bait on the screen here. Probably pogies or mullet. You can also see them on the side scan right there. 12 foot of water. We're gonna be dropping some finger mullets on a Carolina rig, just like that. We're gonna be throwing it towards the bank and over here by these jetties and kind of dragging it to us. That drop off is right here. Hopefully there's a few flounder laying right there that wants a mullet. All right, got a nice, probably four inch juicy finger mullet. It's got a half ounce egg sinker on there just to make sure that bait gets down there on the bottom and stays there. Chunk it out, let it sink to the bottom. And hopefully it shouldn't, it shouldn't take too long. I mean, there's plenty of bait down there, so there's gotta be some flounder eating on them. We've got tons of current just ripping through right here flounder love sitting in current and just waiting for bait to just kind of swim right across their face and hopefully that's the case here do have a pretty good size bait on so i do have a feeling if we oh there's a bite if we get a bite it's going to be a quality fish that was a bite he's taking off with it whatever it is i don't think that's a flounder oh it's a trout Just a little bycatch speckled trout. Oh, easy release. Let's get us another bait down there. Not the target we're after. Mm, there we go. What do we got? He took off with it. Oh my gosh, it is a flounder. Sure didn't act like one. Let's get the net. It's a pretty decent one. Boom. Look at that, I still got the tag on the net. <laughs> Man, that's a thick one. Hooks out. That is a healthy, healthy fish right there. I'll check that flounder out right there. Just a perfect ambush animal, the way it just blends in with the bottom. Gotta love it. That one did not hit like a flounder bite. I mean, it thumped it and then took off with it. All righty, you a lucky fish. Go tell your big mama to eat. Oh, oh how convenient. Thanks for jumping out, buddy. Your sacrifice is appreciated. It took about five or 10 minutes to get that bite, but I do believe it's gonna be more quality over quantity right here. If we can get two or three or even four bites, one of those has gotta be over 20 inches. Cause I mean, we're in some pretty deep water and there's tons of bait around, tons of current. It's just perfect conditions for a, a, a doormat to be laying down there. We got us another one on, I'm letting them eat. Oh my gosh, I don't, that's not a flounder. <laughs> if it is, it's the world record. <laughs> that's a big fish. Golly, that's gotta be a redfish or a drum. Wow, I went to set the hook on that joker and it didn't give. <laughs> my head cam died, of course. Yeah, that's a big fish. <laughs> On the light tackle. Let's see what we got. He's kind of scoping up a little bit. Loosen that drag. Wow. Putting that rod to work. Mm. 
Oh, just feels like dead weight. What do the YouTubers call this? A bridge monster? <laughs> Unintentional bridge monster. Golly. I hope it's not a stingray. Just very little head shakes. Come on. I don't know if I'm gaining anything. There we go. Feels like he's scoping up. 15 pound test braid, y'all. Stronger than you think. All right. Nice little red fish. Man, he's pretty. Super pretty. Let's get this net. Definitely won't be keeping this fish out of the water too long. Boom. And I already hear him drumming. Gah. Woo. He'll check out that little surprise catch there. Probably a 20, I'd say probably a 29, 30 inch redfish there. He put up a pretty good fight. Wasn't expecting that, but let's see, he's got two spots on, on that side, two spots on the other. Pretty orange. Well, he's gone. I was gonna throw him back anyways. I was gonna say he's got some pretty orange bronze colors, but whew, that'll wear you out on the light tackle. 